Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 132 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of percutaneous coronary intervention through two previous TAVR valves. The patient had two previous valves, a 31 millimeter core valve that was placed six years prior, and then a 29 millimeter Sapien 3 valve that was placed a year prior to this presentation when the patient presented with chest pain and inferior ischemia on nuclear stress testing. This is uh, the attempts to do diagnostic and geography. Sometimes it is difficult to engage the coronary arteries. The JY was advanced all the way to the valve, followed by insertion of a JR4 catheter. But then unfortunately the JR4 did not uh, successfully engage the right coronary artery. We eventually used a multipurpose diagnostic catheter, which um, did not completely engage the right coronary artery, but allowed adequate filling to visualize it. And then there was a significant 90% lesion in the mid right coronary artery. What this uh, image shows us is that sometimes perfect engagement is not necessary in order to obtain diagnostic quality and geography of a coronary artery. And that's specifically relevant in patients who have previous uh, TAVR valves. So the plan was to perform PCI of the right coronary artery. There were no significant lesions on the left. We tried to deliver a JR4 catheter, guide catheter, to engage the right coronary artery. But uh, the JR4 was actually catching at the top uh, of the core valve. We ended up uh, using a multipurpose and we used a railway, which is a dilator that goes through the guide and that helped us uh, bypass that superior portion of the core valve. But then uh, we still had difficulty engaging the right coronary artery. So after multiple attempts, we went back to the diagnostic catheter because we do know that diagnostic catheters are sometimes easier to manipulate because they have thicker walls. And with the diagnostic, we were able to get to the same spot. And then we tried to advance uh, a Sion blue guide wire. Interestingly enough, the wire was actually went through the side holes of the diagnostic catheter. As we can see over here, it was pulled back and then rewiring was performed uh, through the tip of the diagnostic catheter. So the Sion blue went all the way back. And then uh, to exchange the catheter, the plan here was to use the diagnostic to engage and then put uh, a supportive guide wire, such as a grand slam, to get uh, all the way into the right coronary artery and then exchange the diagnostic for the guide over this um, guide wire. So that's what was done. The grand slam stays into the right coronary artery. The diagnostic catheter is removed. And then uh, we advanced a JR4 guide catheter. There was uh, some uh, pulling back of the grand slam guide wire, but eventually we were able to get close to the origin of the right coronary artery with the guide using this guide wire as the rail for the guide to be advanced. And then to facilitate engagement, we also used a six friends guide extension, a six friends telescope that here had some difficulty getting through the ostium of the right coronary artery. We were then uh, performed optical coherence tomography. And that um, did demonstrate that uh, there was a significant lesion in the mid right. There was significant calcification on the wall of the right coronary artery. And that lesion here was hard to assess, but it appeared more like a calcified nodule protruding into the lumen with a good size vessel proximal and distal to this lesion. We were eventually able to get fairly good engagement of the right coronary artery. We see here that the guide extension is just proximal to the lesion and the guide is deeply engaged through um, the cells of the core valve. But because of the calcium, we decided to do primary atherectomy. We did have some difficulty advancing. This is the flex tip viper wire through the um, guide extension. And that's something to be kept into mind. If there is difficulty advancing wires through guide extensions, usually the problem is at the collar, at the entrance into the cylinder of the guide extension. And sometimes using fluoroscopy can help uh, guide the wire and avoid the wire to be damaged in that area. 
We performed orbital atherectomy. Multiple passes of orbital atherectomy were performed. And that improved the stenosis. We predilated. We always want to predilate after atherectomy to confirm that there is good balloon expansion. That was a 3.5 millimeter balloon. And then deployed a 4 by 20 millimeter drag eluting stand in the mid right coronary artery that also expanded nicely. OCT was not of good quality. There was um, a poor engagement at this point with poor filling of the, of the vessel. But then we post dilated the stand and that provided a nice final result with a TM3 flow in the right coronary artery and no embolization. There are several lessons from this case. The first one that uh, although TAVER can make angiography and PCI a little more challenging, for the vast majority of those cases, uh, one can obtain both angiography and perform PCI by going through the cells of the valves. Perfect engagement is not always necessary. The multipurpose diagnostic catheter was not perfectly engaged into the right coronary in the beginning of the case, but nevertheless, it did provide good quality images. When engagement is difficult, using a diagnostic catheter is sometimes advantageous as those catheters are thicker and more torqueable. And then if engagement can be achieved with a diagnostic catheter, then one can advance a long supportive guide wire, such as the Grand Slam in this particular case, and then remove the diagnostic catheter and insert the guide over this uh, supportive wire. And finally, for PCIs, through previous towers. Guide extension can also be very useful to deeply engage the coronary artery, both for better visualization and also to facilitate equipment delivery. Thank you.